paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Welcome to Passion for Fashion, the series that takes you through the whole fashion world, from military looks to Americana to vintage, the whole kit and caboodle. But today we focus on the world of Pret-a-Porter and the legendary designers that brought haute couture to the high streets. Pret-a-Porter has become a worldwide industry of established and up-and-coming designers who show their creations on catwalks that even celebrities compete for front row seats. If you're hot, you're in. Pret-a-Porter is the French for ready to wear, and here's our catwalk show. I'd look good in that. However, these fabulous outfits wouldn't have been attainable if it wasn't for one man, Yves Saint Laurent. He took the world of haute couture and tailored it for the high street. Rive Gauche was the place to be in 1960s Paris. The who's who of counterculture had lived there from Baudelaire, Rambo, Verlaine, and Samuel Beckett. To open a shop here was a statement, as it was not fashionable back then. Eve wanted to do something different. His Reeve Ghost shop specialized in women's ready-to-wear, and his arty neighbor Cassandra even designed him a logo that we still see everywhere today. The other French designer making an advance out of couture was Pierre Cardin. Pierre got himself expelled from the exclusive Institut's Chambre Syndicale for creating a ready-to-wear line for French department store Printemps. However, his bubble dresses were taking the world by storm, and he set up his own women's boutique, Eve, shortly followed by the boutique, Adam, for, you guessed it, men. These designers with their shops led the way for the brands we take for granted today. Ralph Lauren, Max Mara, and Armani jumped onto the springboard that Yves Saint Laurent and Cardin built. Thanks to them, Armani gets to dress Megan Fox and Cristiano Ronaldo. What a pair. And that is what you need to know. Yves Saint Laurent was a master of couture and pret-a-porter. His smoking jackets and wide-cut trousers for women defined the 60s, and his brand continues to woo the biggest names in cinema and music. When he worked for Dior, his beautiful drawings and designs led him to become chief designer of the label. At only 21, he was the world's youngest with such a title. Chanel freed women and I empowered them, he once said, and he was not wrong. When he opened his own fashion house, his designs were a groundbreaking mix of feminine and masculine, confident yet elegant. His Le Smoking Jacket became his trademark, perhaps inspired by Marlena Dietrich. A tuxedo pantsuit for women became the most sought after of his designs and went down in rock history when Bianca Jagger married Rolling Stone frontman Mick Jagger wearing one. Saint Laurent wowed the fashion world with his Mondrian dresses, which had been inspired by the painter. He was the first designer to put black models on the catwalk, helping kickstart the careers of Sonia Cole and Iman. And after Vogue rejected Naomi Campbell, Saint Laurent, who recognized her beauty, stepped in and landed her the cover of French Vogue. However, no woman epitomizes the brand more than the French film star, Catherine Deneuve. She was Saint Laurent's muse. The two met when he designed the clothes for Belle du Jour in 1966, and then began an enduring friendship that would see Saint Laurent design the costumes for her in La Chamade, Mississippi Mermaid, and The Hunger, a film in which he starred alongside fellow Saint Laurent fan, David Bowie. He wore Saint Laurent suits for his Diamond Dogs tour. Deneuve was a style icon for the house, and even as late as 1992 was the face of his skincare line. Faithful until his death, she attended his funeral in the black trench and buckled ballerinas she wore in a scene from Belle du Jour. Tom Ford took creative control of the label from 1999 to 2004. His work was showcased spectacularly when Julianne Moore wore his emerald green dress, impressing the red carpet at the 2003 Oscars. 
Today, the label is high up in the echelons of Pret-a-Porter under the creative direction of Hedy Slimane. His first show in 2012 was eagerly awaited, and in 2013, he continued the tradition of the brand's association with music, working with Daft Punk in a campaign. Hollywood's new favorite leading lady, Jessica Chastain, is charged with fronting the YSL perfume brand today. Music and fashion have gone hand in hand over the years. Yves Saint Laurent and other pret a porter labels have kept our pop stars looking top notch. Here is our countdown of the leading ladies. Pull up to the bumper, here comes one of fashion's trailblazers. Who else can call themselves a model, singer, an actress, and sometimes the stuff of nightmares? Known for her wild side, she used to party into the late hours in the Parisian club, The Palace, with Yves Saint Laurent, Karl Lagerfeld, and Giorgio Armani. Her mate Armani gave her one of his jackets for the iconic cover of her album, Nightclub. Grace's play with gender has a lot in common with the Le Smoking jacket of Yves Saint Laurent, which is not surprising as she was one of Yves catwalk models in the 1970s. Her one-man show tour in 1982 arrived at a time when Eve created a show featuring baggy trousers, eye-obscuring wigs and strong shoulder jackets, accentuating her strong look. Very few pop stars can claim that. Stay with us for more of our countdown after we take a look at a little craziness with What The Fashion? This one's called If Michael Jackson Lived 10 Years Longer. Ladies, it's a little black dress you just couldn't find. I always wear my caps backwards. something to pop out to the shops in. Ah, this must be known as cruise wear. At last, you can look stylish in the shower. I remember when I got caught out in the rain in my underpants and sunglasses. You just gotta work it. Back to our countdown. At number four, it's Florence. Ever since she burst onto the scene, Florence Welsh has been the songstress every designer wants to dress. It's been such a blur. Kooky and oozing style, no one other than Florence could perform in a giant oyster shell for Chanel's spring summer collection. Very few pop stars get an entire tour designed by a major label, but Gucci stepped in to design bespoke dresses for her ceremonials tour. You got the love. Florence has shown her love for Yves Saint Laurent when those all-important awards have come along. She wore a stunning YSL gown at the 2011 Grammy Awards. She chose YSL Fall 2010 for the Q Awards with a look taken straight from the catwalk. But most spectacularly, her angelic YSL dress at the recent Met Gala set tongues wagging. Who's got the love? You've got the love, Florence. You've got the love, no need to see me through. Being one of the most expensive retail property strips in the world, London's Bond Street is where you would find the biggest names. Bond Street took its name from Sir Thomas Bond, whose motto was, the world is not enough. Evidently, this is why he continually bought land around the country, including what became this elegant street. Before the leading fashion brands moved into Bond Street, it was best known for being the home of art dealers and antique shops clustered around Sotheby's auction house. 
Today, it is home to many of the biggest names in fashion, such as Dior, Ralph Lauren, and of course, Yves Saint Laurent. He opened his first London shop here in 1969. The opening of Rive Gauche on Bond Street was attended by Lulu de la Falaise, another muse to Eve known for her bohemian style. Over the years, the shop has undergone a series of changes in style, but today it is very much in keeping with the recent additions of the Louis Vuitton supersized Maison and other luxury megastores from Gucci, Chanel and Dior. Number three on our pop star Pret-a-Porter countdown is Rita Ora. In a short space of time, Rita Ora has not only established herself as one of Britain's biggest names in music, but also fashion. She has worn outfits by Vivian Westwood and Alexander McQueen on the red carpet, and was recently given Karl Lagerfeld's seal of approval with a seat on the front row of his Paris Couture show. Every girl needs a best friend, and Rita's happens to be model of the moment, Cara Delevingne. Cara is fronting the YSL baby doll mascara campaign, and she has obviously been letting Rita raid her wardrobe, as Rita wore a YSL jacket and hat to the L Women in Music Party, looking every inch a little smoking woman. Cara and Rita are rumored to be creating their own fashion line. Maybe they'll be returning the favor to Carl one day. Still to come, more from the world of Pret-a-Porter, where we'll be spinning around with Kylie, we continue our countdown, the top film and fashion collaborations, and looking at where Pret-a-Porter is heading. The world's top designers have collaborated with some of the biggest directors in cinema, resulting in unforgettable moments. Yves Saint Laurent was one of the first to make this step. Not long after setting up his couture house, Saint Laurent dressed Claudia Cardinale in the 1963 film The Pink Panther. Although chased by Hollywood, he chose to stay in France and dress the nerve in Belle du Jour. The camera has now turned on Yves himself in not one, but two biopics about his life. One called Saint Laurent, and rather confusingly, another called Yves Saint Laurent. The battle has started as to who owns his name. Now to the glamour of the 20s. Love is blindness. Director Baz Luhrmann has style by the plenty in his films, but to bag Prada and Tiffany's for the wardrobe of his adaptation of The Great Gatsby was a masterstroke. Miuccia Prada and Luhrmann's Oscar-winning production designer wife, Catherine Martin, raided the archives, modifying classic Prada designs to suit the kind of roaring 20s depicted in the film. I'm certainly glad to see you again. I'm certainly glad to see you. All of her jewelry was designed by Tiffany's. None more desired than the $3.9 million engagement ring she wears. Sorry to break the bad news to those grabbing their credit cards right now, but the ring has been sold. Hi, I'm Nikki. This is Sam. Hi. Another tie-in was the Sofia Coppola film, The Bling Ring. The rip from the headline story of teenagers breaking into the homes of the rich and famous would need the real clothes from the scene of the crime. Having friends in high places, Sophia asked her mate Mark Jacobs to provide the film with the Louis Vuitton bags and clothes she needed, and he did. He was also clever enough to supply the cast with Vuitton dresses for the premiere in LA and New York. The film needed extra security for the Bulgari jewelry, and 10 guards were on set just to protect the $15 million collection. Oh, the irony, if any had gone missing. It all comes back to, like, bad choices. Who you have is your friend. The Six in the City series was all about fashion moments. Carrie Bradshaw changed the game of fashion, making tutus work in New York City and making every girl want Manolo Blahnik shoes. The show's stylist, Patricia Field, did not have any difficulty in getting the leading names of fashion to provide whatever was requested for the two Sex in the City films. Each of the four women wore beautiful dresses from designers such as Yves Saint Laurent, Versace, Chanel, and Gucci. Carrie's wedding dress was Vivian Westwood. A version of the dress was available online on net porte and sold out in a matter of hours. What other character could sell $10,000 wedding dresses in a recession other than Carrie? Now there's a bride. <laughs> Oscar-winning actress Kate Blanchett was recently named the face of Giorgio Armani's latest fragrance. But the two have collaborated before. In the 2011 film Hannah, Armani created a custom wardrobe for her character. 
Armani said in a press release, Kate embodies the perfect combination of consummate actor and world-class fashion icon. And she certainly looked the part. Did she turn out as you hoped? Better. Not quite making our top spot in the press porter countdown is Madonna. She needs no real introduction, but I'm going to give you one anyway. Her original style seemed to come out of the thrift shops, and she defined the 80s generation. Madonna has always had a keen eye for fashion and how it can make an impact. Over her 30-year career, she has had some iconic moments, but none more so than the Jean-Paul Gaultier conical bra outfit. He made it for her 1990 Blonde Ambition tour, and in turn, it made him a household name. Madonna has continued to work with Gautier, appearing on his catwalk in controversial outfits, and later he dressed her MDMA tour in 2012. Madonna wears her influences and inspirations with flair. Her love of Marlena Dietrich is one that she expresses reverentially. Marlena was known for challenging ideas of what a woman should wear. She wore men's suits and top hats so well, in fact better than men, that others followed. Yves Saint Laurent took Marlena's look further with his The Smoking Jacket, tailoring the traditionally male suit to fit a woman. Madonna has worn this look from early on in her career, most memorably in the videos for Vogue and Express Yourself. She also dressed in a tux and top hat for the premiere of her MDNA film. So who beat Madonna? Stay with us to see who's number one. So now, the shop. But perhaps not the conventional shop. From Pret-a-Porter to Net-a-Porter, to the digital version which saves you from buying Louboutin heels just to go out and buy some more. Net-a-Porter was established in 2000 and today has more than 300 high fashion brands on its dynamic site. Here, it is all too easy to buy a Bottega Veneta dress or a Versace jacket with the click of a mouse. The company has been hugely successful in cornering the online shopping market for those with a little bit extra to spend but reluctant to venture outdoors. Or the wealthy agrophobes, as I like to call them. net porter has its own online magazine called The Edit, which is published in English, French, German and Mandarin, reaching out to the international woman in a way boutiques cannot. The outfits the models wear are linked to that all-important shopping cart. And their YouTube channel has interviews with greats like Karl Lagerfeld, Alexander Wang, and tips from fashion-oriented celebrities like the Olsen twins and Misha Barton. The site was set up by Natalie Massenet, who had a career in fashion editorial for Tatler magazine, where she used to assist Isabella Blow. She promoted her new company Pregnant from an apartment in Chelsea, but now she has offices in the UK, US, and Hong Kong. Natalie convinced Roland Moray in 2001 to sell his first collection on net a porter a move that proved the influence the site was building. And on its 10th birthday, leading names in fashion attended the site's party. With the stigma of online shopping fading and over 2 million logging in each week to net a porter could this be the future for pret a porter She would be so lucky. Kylie Minogue takes our number one spot. A career of over 25 years in the charts can only mean a wardrobe to fit 25 years of the finest that fashion has to offer. Kylie has worn it all. Givenchy, Chanel, Dolce & Gabbana to name but a few. So much so, she wrote a whole book about it. On the Showgirl tour alone, the costumes were designed by John Galliano, Karl Lagerfeld, Julian McDonald and Gareth Pugh, making her surely the envy of most stars. Having been the absent fairy in Baz Luhrmann's exuberant Moulin Rouge, it only seemed fitting that Paris would dress Kylie. All hail the princess of pret a -Porter. Let's take a closer look at our number one and see why every designer wants to dress her. Tiny, fun and sexy, Kylie Minogue has always turned heads for her style. She led the way in co-opting fashion into pop music way before Rihanna, Katy Perry or Lady Gaga. 
It wasn't always like that, though. No one would have guessed that Charlene from Neighbours would become a trendsetter. Although, having said that, Charlene's penchant for dungarees is now one shared with a host of hot names, like Alexa Chung, Cameron Diaz, and Fergie. It was when Kylie met William Baker that things changed. William was working as a sales assistant in a Vivian Westwood shop when he impressed her so much with his ideas that she took him out for a coffee and made him her stylist. The pair have been BFFs ever since. His early work with her was inspired by the 90s supermodel era and Kylie found herself on the front of ID magazine and The Face. Baker introduced her to the emerging London fashion designers. She visited the studios and this evolved into designers such as Richard Nicole, Gareth Pugh and David Comer, contributing to her shows. Her David Comer dress was used in the video for Get Out of My Way, a moment that Comer said opened doors for him. He had to get out of his way because he was coming through the door. Underground label Mrs. Jones provided Kylie with the flimsy white jumpsuit for the Can't Get You Out of My Head video, making red-blooded males everywhere wish they had something as loose-fitting to wear. Kylie hasn't been afraid to try to work outside of Preta Forte too. Those gold hot pants from the 2000 Spinning Around video were bought by William Baker for 50 pence in a junk shop. William continues to work with Kylie today, but he has also found time to style and direct tours and videos for everyone from Bjork to Rihanna to Britney. Kylie signed a deal in 2013 with Jay-Z's Rock Nation label. There will be a whole lot more than 50 pence. Join us next time for Passion for Fashion and check out more stories from the realms of glamour, catwalk and the red carpet.